Hello kids, thought I'd give you an update, middle of February. Well, the, uh, the rust out is back on the trailer and I have ordered body panels for it, about $3,000 worth, something that I don't normally do. But I've got a box full over here. Um, I've got uh, inner and outer rears. I've got two new rear fenders. I've got a floor. Um, I've got a battery tray, um, floors uh, left and right, inner sills and whatnot. So I'm in pretty good shape there. <clears throat> On this car, you recall that when I harvested the engine and transmission out of the other one, I thought they were really good. But my situation here is such that I wanted to send them out to get them done. I've, <laughs> I've been diagnosed with cancer, so I, I didn't didn't want to fool around here so I sent these out so this this engine was uh, built for me by Sam in Central Ohio it's a bog standard engine it's very nice I thought the engine was in outstanding condition and it actually was we've been able to reuse the cam the cam followers uh, whatnot and so forth the the uh, the crank only needed a polish but it needed to be bored so it has new pistons 20 over and rings but the interesting thing about this is is that you know sam very wonderful guy just a wonderful guy he said you know this thing got hot and you can see the bluish tint to it it got hot now although the engine didn't show any damage here's the evidence so it has uh, new rods in it it's a nice thorough rebuild. Expensive. It's expensive because you're hiring an expert to do it and I don't expect experts to work for cheap and remember you're not hiring them for what he knows necessarily. You're hiring them for what they know that goes wrong and anyone can build an engine when it goes well but it's when things don't go well that you need the expert. So it's sort of like an airline pilot. You probably don't need an airline pilot unless there's trouble and there's rarely ever trouble but when there is you really need them so anyway so here it is um i had a uh, flywheel resurfaced the ring gears on most of these tend to be the wrong direction this had an inertia starter on it so i put a new ring gear on it and uh, flipped it the other way and i have a uh, wasp uh, high torque reduced uh, ratio whatever you call it starter for it so this whole thing is very nice. I also sent the rear end and the transmission out to Quantum to John Esposito. This is a very, very nice product. I thought the transmission was in really, really good shape too, but actually it had problems. So uh, it came back fully rebuilt. The, again, this was expensive. Uh, I'm, I'm picking up on all the little things. I put new pins on my, uh, on my fork and I'm getting ready to mount the uh, the fork and I've got bushings coming from Moss. I, one went in, but I ruined the other bushing when I went to, to uh, install it. I don't know what the hell happened, but for some reason I can't get uh, I can't get the bushing to go in. So anyway, I've already installed the rear end and the rear suspension and whatnot on the car. So this is uh, this is you know it's on its way to being uh, to being assembled. But what I want to talk to you about is, is this stuff. You know, I could have reused this transmission just the way it was, but the fact of the matter was it had serious problems. Now, 30 or 40 years ago when I was a kid, you'd buy this transmission out of a, out of a salvage yard, run it for a year, it'd blow up, you didn't think anything of it, you got another one. But times have changed. This is why the hobby is getting expensive. This stuff doesn't grow on trees. And I got a call from John, you know, he's very good. I got a call from John and he said, look, you know, here's the problem. Uh, you can't always get the parts. Uh, he's got a brake ring uh, guy in England who, who, uh, who puts new friction material on brake rings for his E-type. Uh, I think that's a D-type overdrive. And uh, so these things, you know, I could have put this in the car and it would have run, but it may not have run for long. And I may have misinterpreted what its final demise was. So I think in this day and age, you've got to be careful about having that kind of an attitude. Now I know a lot of guys will take a, uh, a rear end 
and they'll, as they say, freshen it up. And part of that freshening it up is taking the, uh, the, the input flange off and putting a new seal on it. <coughs> putting a new seal on it. The problem with that is, is that you lose the preload. I sent him three rear ends and I had them all redone because I wanted them in stock. The one that I thought was the best, it even had problems. He had to machine the bearing cap on it. Uh, it, had, it needed a new crown wheel and pinion. Amazing. So again, these don't grow on trees. That rear end probably would have worked had I just left it alone, but I went ahead and put uh, axle shaft bearings in it and thought, you know, I need to send this thing out. You know, let's stop fooling around here. Uh, I don't want a rear end that lasts for a year. I want one that, that's going to go the distance. And the car, the car is going to be a nice car. You know, obviously it's going to be a nice car. So I want it to go the distance. This car will live beyond me, more than likely, and uh, it deserves it, I think. So it's an expensive proposition all of a sudden. Um, you know, this, this uh, transmission, this engine, and this rear end, uh, I've got 10,000 bucks in it probably. Well, $10,000 in the three rear ends, engine and transmission. So that's the sort of thing that has happened here. With my diagnosis, I'm having to shrink time a little bit. Um, of course, I'm working on all these small details. My big problem now is going to be carburation because my, uh, my carburetor set that's off this car, I couldn't get the fuel bowl off one of them. And in trying to get the fuel bowl off, um, um, we unfortunately damaged uh, the fuel bowl a little bit. So I, uh, <laughs> oh, here it is. It's right here. It's, it's now, as you can see, it's a little bit warped. This is a fixed jet carburetor. Um, you know, I mean, they'll clean up well. I think they would rebuild okay, but I'm not real sure about how the, uh, the adjustability of, of the carb is going to be. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do here. I have another set of carburetors I can rebuild. They're the same vintage fixed jet. It's the same thing, same old thing. And, uh, you know, it just remains to be seen, you know, what I can do. Uh, this is uh, this is dry soda blasted. So when this is cleaned in carburetor cleaner, all this white residue will go away. It does a really nice job. Uh, now, I didn't, obviously I didn't blast them real hard. I just wanted to clean them up. But once I realized I had a problem with this carburetor, I stopped. But uh, if you do a reduced pressure and you dry blast them, it's very easy on your components. And uh, even the decals stay on it. So that's how I do it. Um, I have a uh, fuel pump coming. Uh, here's some stuff I'm gonna, going to uh, reassemble. I use a Harbor Freight blaster. Uh, I run glass beads mixed with um, with with uh, soda, bicarbonate of soda. This is an agricultural product. I can get it off of Amazon. It does a good job. The soda gets the grease off. The glass beads, uh, uh, they peen over the surface and get the oxidation off of it. So it works pretty well. I'd like to have a better setup, but, you know, when you go from here up, you know, you go from spending hundreds to spending thousands. Anyway, so that's the update. Um, I feel good today. I don't always feel good. I'm on chemo. But if I can get a good stretch, I'm going to go and uh, pull the other car in here. I have my plasma cutter all fixed up. I have a good game plan on what to do to get this other car going. It's the one with the brown tarp uh, behind my most excellent 2001 one ton. So uh, hopefully we'll dig into that if I feel well. Please know I love you all. Talk to you soon. Bye.